Let's dip in. Much more will be going down. And it's good news, in my view, for the overall economy, because lower borrowing costs will support economic growth. And it's an important signal from the President, from the Federal Reserve to the nation that after repeated interest hikes to cool down inflation, inflation has come back down, and the Fed, the Fed is lowering, switched to lowering rates to keep the country growing, the economy growing. At its peak, as you all know, inflation was 9.1 percent in the United States. Today, it is much closer to 2 percent. It doesn't mean our work is done. Far from it. Far from it. No one should confuse why I'm here. I'm not here to take a victory lap. I'm not here to say a job well done. I'm not here to say we don't have a hell of a lot more work to do. We do have more work to do. But what I am here to speak about is how far we come, how we got here, and most importantly, the foundation that I believe built for a more prosperous and equitable future in America. So let's be clear. The Fed lowering interest rates is, isn't a declaration of victory. It's a declaration of progress. It's a signal we've entered a new phase of our economy and our recovery. You know, I believe it's important for the country to recognize this progress because, because if we don't, the progress we made will remain locked in the fear of negative mindset that dominated our economic outlook since the pandemic began. Instead of seeing the immense opportunities in front of us right now, it's a, this is a moment, in my view, for business to feel greater confidence, to invest higher, and to expand. It's a moment for individuals to feel greater confidence buying a home, a new car, starting a family, starting a new business. We've, we're creating jobs. Employment remains very low. Small business creation is at its historic highs. The economy is growing. The main challenge we've had has been uh, a painful one, but uh, it's been the pandemic and the inflation it created, causing enormous pain and hardship for families all across America. It's not true just for us, but for every major economy in the world. But now, now inflation is coming down in the United States. The fact is, it's come down faster and lower than almost any other world's advanced economies. So now, instead of looking at interest rates and increases, interest rates are going to be coming down and they're expected to go down further. And that's a good place for us to be. Now, <laughs> a lot of people, as you all know, maybe you know a few, thought we'd never get here. When Kamala and I came to office, 3,000 people a day were dying of COVID, 3,000 a day. Millions of Americans have lost their jobs, their businesses, and the global economy was in a tailspin. Four years ago, we inherited the worst pandemic in a century, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. In fact, my predecessor is one of just a few two presidents in American history who left office with fewer jobs than the day he came to office. The other, Herbert Hoover. When I came to office, there was no real plan in place, no plan to deal with the pandemic, no plan to get the economy back on its feet, nothing, virtually nothing. In fact, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office predicted we wouldn't, we wouldn't see a full recovery until well after the end of my first term in office. But I refused to accept that, like many of you refused to accept it. I came to office determined not only to deliver immediate economic relief for the American people, but to transform the way our economy works over the long term, to write a new economic playbook, grow the economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not just the top down. Put workers first, support unions to make sure workers have a bargaining clout they need to get a fair price to grow that pie. And after all, it's the productivity, they're the productivity baked into that pie, in my view. No one, leave no one behind. Foster fair, fair competition. Invest in all of America and in all Americans. When we do things for the poor, and have they have a ladder up? The middle class does very well, and the wealthy continue to do very well. We all do well, and we are doing well. Working families in the middle class are the center of the strong, equitable, and sustainable recovery. Here are the keys from the new playbook, in my view. Within the first two months in office, I signed the American Rescue Plan, one of the most significant economic recovery packages in our history. Not a single person on the other team, Republicans, voted for it. It delivered shots in the arm for vaccines to vaccinate the nation. 
in one of the most sophisticated logistical operations in American history. I found it incredibly difficult to plan that. Without protecting our nation from COVID, our economic recovery would never have taken off. It also delivered immediate economic relief for those who needed it the most. An individual earning less than $75,000 a year received a $1,400 check. So a family of five earning less than $150,000 a year could receive as much as $7,000. And by the way, middle-class families like the one I grew up and many of you grew up in, that is a game-changer. That saved people's sense of being. It also prevented a wave, a wave of evictions, bankruptcies, and delinquencies and defaults that the previous crises weak weakened the recovery and left working families permanently further behind. I was determined to avoid what Secretary Yellen called the economic scarring, scarring that hurt so many Americans and left them behind in the past. We delivered essential funding to states and local governments to keep essential services moving, to keep teachers and first responders on the job, to keep small businesses open, and to build more housing. We also expanded the child tax credit to cut child poverty in half. With the Butch Lewis Act, we took the most significant action in 50 years to protect the pensions of millions of union workers and retirees. Before we acted, workers faced cuts to their pensions. Now we're restoring the full amount of their pensions, including for workers who previously saw cuts. And there's so much more. But we also know the pandemic led to a surge in inflation all across America and the world uh, and the country, I should say. And the economy shut down and then opened back up in an unprecedented manner. Shipping had stalled. Factories shut down. Inflation grew worse after Putin invaded Ukraine, which sent food prices skyrocketing, energy prices soaring around the world. So we immediately brought together business and labor to fix the problem of some broken supply chains and unclog our ports, trucking networks, and shipping lines. Remember those massive cargo ships stuck outside the port of Los Angeles, delaying deliveries and driving up prices during the holiday season? Remember that? We remember the shortage of baby formula and the crisis that caused? Well, we got supply chains back to normal. When we did that, inflation began to ease. It doesn't solve, but ease. It also, I, also, I also rallied our allies to stand against Putin's aggression. In the beginning, there wasn't a whole lot of support for that. I warned them all. I got clearance from the intelligence community to let them know when he was going to invade. They didn't believe it was going to happen. But he invaded exactly when I said he was, led the world to realize that we're in real problem.